Hello, I'm Jessica Ryan Keeney, and this is my son, Terry. He wanted to be part of these videos. He might be a little loud, and he likes to give his two cents. But I am a family law attorney licensed to practice law in the state of California. I've been practicing family law since December 2009 when I was sworn into the bar. I am the Department of Child Support Services attorney for two small rural Northern California counties. These videos that I make are not legal advice. These are for educational purposes only. I'm not responsible for the outcome of your case, Department of Child Support support services isn't responsible for the outcome of your case. It's your responsibility to seek the legal advice of an attorney who can help you figure out what's best for your case. With that out of the way, we're going to talk about downward deviations from guideline child support. Yeah! Yeah! So, high five? Okay, so what's a downward deviation from guideline child support? It's when the court orders less than guideline child support. So California Family Code basically says that the guideline child support is presumed to be the correct amount of child support, but it's a rebuttable presumption. And that means that the court is just automatically going to assume that the guideline child support is the correct amount of child support in your case. And the court's going to do this and make an order of guideline child support unless somebody rebuts the presumption. And so if you want the court to order less than guideline child support, it's your job to prove to the court that the court should order less than guideline child support. So I could go deep into the law, case law, all that good stuff. I'm not going to do that here. I'm just going to do a quick and dirty discussion about the arguments that I see people make. So the most frequent arguments I see people make are that they have relatively equal timeshare with the other party. Uh, usually it's pretty close to 50-50 or that they are trying to increase their timeshare. Hey, hey, please stop that, baby. It's loud. And that increased timeshare, I frequently see that when CPS has been involved and they're going through family reunification. Uh, also, another argument I see frequently is the party who's paying support actually has more income than the party who, I'm sorry, <laughs> the party who's paying support has more timeshare than the party who's receiving support. That one's okay. not so common. No, you don't get to play with that. That's a pen. Other common arguments I see are that the party paying support has high travel expenses to see the kids. We live in a really remote area. So it's not uncommon for it to cost a couple hundred bucks a month for parties to travel to see the kids. Another common argument I see is that the parent who's paying support has unusually high monthly expenses, things that aren't discretionary, like medical expenses or uh, uninsured losses. Although sometimes people argue that their housing expenses are unusually high and that they don't have much of a choice in the matter. And I have seen that argument succeed. Let's see. Other arguments I see people make for a downward deviation. Oh, that if they were to pay guideline child support, it wouldn't leave them with enough monthly income to pay their monthly expenses, the non-discretionary expenses, that it wouldn't leave them with enough income to visit the children, that it would interfere with their relationship with the children because they wouldn't be able to afford to visit the children as often, that the children have unusually high expenses. I, I see that a lot with special needs kids. So those are the arguments that I frequently see people make for a downward deviation from guideline child support. But here's the thing, it's your job to make sure that the court and the other party know you're going to make these arguments. And you do this two ways. You do this in writing and you do this verbally in court. 
So if you're the party asking to modify child support, then you're going to file a motion and it might be a notice of motion. It might be a request for order. You're going to ask the court to change child support and you're going to state all the reasons why you need the court to deviate downward from guideline child support in your motion. Now, if the Department of Child Support Services filed the motion to modify child support, you stop doing that, you're shaking the table. Then you're going to respond to their motion and you're going to be, hey, 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 you're shaking the table, baby. No, I said. You can still sit there, but you're shaking the table, so you've got to sit still. You're going to file a response to governmental notice of motion. And if a private party, say the other parent stop. in the case, stop. no, we're not stopping. You need to stop, but I still need the video. So if the other party in the case filed the motion, it was probably going to be a request for order, maybe a notice motion. It's possible they did an order to show cause. Anyway, you're going to be filing a response to a request for order or an order to show cause or a response to a notice of motion. These response documents are judicial counsel forms, and I'll provide a link in the description to the judicial counsel forms in California. Also, the good news is when you're served with the motion to modify child support, the other party is supposed to serve you with the blank response documents, so you shouldn't have to guess at the forms you need to fill out. So you filled out the proper judicial counsel forms and you've explained what's going on in your case and why you need a downward deviation from guideline child support. You've properly served the documents. You've properly filed the documents. Now the day of court comes. So you show up in court and you have to talk to the judge. This can be kind of scary. So it's important not to interrupt the court, not to interrupt the other parties when they're speaking. So take a pad of paper and a pen and anything that you think of that you want to talk to the court about, you need to write down on that pad of paper. Most courts are really good at making sure you have time to speak. But if something happens and you haven't been given an opportunity to speak to the court, then you need to get the court's attention politely and you need to let the court know that you have some things you'd like the court to hear. And the best way to figure out how to do this is go to court and watch other attorneys so that you can see how they do it and you can see how the court reacts. So you might need to go to court before you're actually court before your actual court appearance so that you can kind of get a feel for how this is going to how this is going to work. Anyway, your time to speak to the court comes and you need to verbally explain to the court all the reasons why you need the court to order less than guideline child support. You may not be able to remember everything, but that's okay. When you're preparing for court, write down your arguments and you can actually read directly from your court prep sheet, from your pad of paper, from the motion you filed, from your responsive declaration. This is not Toastmasters and it's not a public speaking competition. You're not being graded on how well you speak. You just need to speak loudly and enunciate your words clearly and make sure you get your point across to the judge and that you don't miss anything. So I hope this helps. I have a write-up about this as well on my website. My website is jessicaryankeeney.com. No, sorry. It's jessicaryankeenylaw.com. There's a link to it below in the description. So jessicaryankeenylaw.com. And as I do more videos and there are other resources that go along with the videos, I will be posting those on my website and I will be putting links in the description on YouTube. So if you have any questions, you're free to ask them in the comments below. I got to warn you again, though, I can't give you legal advice. I can only tell you how I see other people handle the situation. I can give you some ideas for handling the situation, but that doesn't mean it's the right answer for your case. It's your responsibility to seek legal advice from an attorney who's not me. 
to find out what's best for your case. So thank you for watching. Tune in next time for more videos about family law and child support issues. Oh, and if there's any particular topic you'd like to see me cover, put that in the comments too. I do check those. So thank you. Can you say bye, Terry? Yeah. Say bye to the camera. Bye. <laughs> Good job. Yeah. I'm back. I went to go get lunch and I thought of a couple more things. So in order for the court to deviate downward from guideline child support, make a below guideline child support order, the court's going to need to make some findings on the record and or in writing. And a lot of times the court will just recite this in court. And those are the court has to state what the actual guideline child support amount is, why the amount of child support being ordered is below guideline, and why the amount of child support being ordered is in the best interest of the children. Also, I want to make you all aware of this great book. So this is the Child Support Attorney Sourcebook. I will also call it the DCSS Sourcebook. I'll call it the Child Support Bible. Anyway, it's a wonderful book. It's put out by CSDA, which is associated with Department of Child Support Services. It's basically State Department of Child Support Services. They're like some other part of the organization. I'm not real good on the hierarchy. Anyway, awesome book. I provide a link to it in the description below. If you have a child support case, I highly recommend spending the money on that book because it does a really good job explaining legal concepts and citing the law so that you kind of have an idea what's going on in your case, why things are happening the way they are, and you can actually go look at the law for yourself and verify what everyone's saying. Okay, with that, I'm really signing off. Thank you for watching.